That's right. <laughs> Preaching's good and everybody stays in line. Yeah. All right, hallelujah. Okay, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today. We just ask you just to anoint this time, anoint the word. Father God, to help us uh, in this in this uh, in this time, Father God, we rely upon your your grace, uh, your, your presence, and your leading and guiding. And Father God, we thank you that you protect us, you keep all all evil all evil from us. And uh, Father Father God, we, we thank you for just the, the protection of the Holy Spirit, Father God, that, that follows us every place that we go. And that, Father God, no harm uh, can come to us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 First uh, Peter chapter 3, verse 12. We're continuing where we left off. It says, For the eyes of the Lord, so, so God, God, God is looking. God, God, God sees us. He knows what we are doing. Um, although at times I think we all probably can agree that we don't always feel as though uh, God is, is watching and reacting. Uh, to, to things and circumstances that are going on or sometimes wonder why he's not reacting faster but anyway here it says here for the eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous that's definitely encouraging uh, we know that we're righteous uh, we're righteous because uh, we, are, we are saved, sanctified uh, covered by the blood of Jesus uh, cleansed with his uh, power and grace and we're probably righteous because we try to do the right thing. Um, not, not, that, not that we are self-righteous, but of course you can't be, there's a part of righteousness, of course, that is, that is through uh, the, the blood of Jesus and, and through His grace and His power, but, but it's also the part you cannot ignore in doing or trying to do also the right, correct thing uh, according to the Bible. So the Bible says, for the eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous. And the Lord basically, as we will see a little bit later here, uh, he, he is for us. Uh, God, God, God is for us. Uh, the things still happen, uh, as we all do too well know, uh, the things definitely do happen. Uh, sometimes, um, we'll see here also later on, sometimes things that are either unfair or we, we consider to be unfair, uh, the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous and his ears attend to their prayers. So you have definitely the impression there that uh, God, God is for us and uh, our prayers are not uh, in vain. Uh, that God, of course, does listen to our prayers, to, does answer our prayers. Where we're all very much aware uh, of the fact that God um, that does not answer them uh, the way that... Uh, we, we sometimes expect. Uh, I, guess, I guess some people say that God always answers prayer, just not uh, not not the way we wanted it to be. Um, and that, and that, that of course is definitely the case. Uh, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. That's a comfort uh, that we know because because at times in the world it does seem as though, and I guess it doesn't just seem as though. I guess it really is at, at a certain level that the, that the evil is winning. Uh, when we look at our society, and, and I guess that's not that's not a seem to be. Uh, I guess I guess to a degree, it, is, it definitely is. I mean, it does not appear anyway that righteousness and justice and truth is winning. It appears uh, who is winning is the person who has the most money, uh, the, the the fastest talker, uh, the, the maybe the person who's uh, who's smarter than this person, which doesn't necessarily make them right. It might just make them smarter. It might make them a better talker. Uh, they're able to present their case better. Uh, they're able to argue better. Uh, but just because they're smarter, can argue better, doesn't necessarily make them right. Uh, so, so it seems as though at times uh, that evil and wrong and doing wrong uh, uh, seems, seems to prevail. Uh, but it definitely does not prevail. Or let's say it may prevail in, in, in the world of the devil. In other words, it may prevail here uh, upon, upon the earth, uh, but it def definitely does not prevail in God's world. Uh, God's world, evil does not prevail. Uh, it is not considered a good thing. Um, uh, there, there's definitely in that world a completely, completely different standard uh, on what is right, what is wrong, who's right, who's wrong, who gets glorified, who gets uh, humbled. 
So the Bible says here, for the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So we can definitely take comfort in that. And I think that that only does not does only take place uh, in heaven or after everyone's dead. Um, I think it, I think it takes place here on earth. Maybe, maybe somehow, not not always, but but I think basically basically evil does not prevail. Uh, but basically they they do not get away with it. But basically, like the Bible says, what you, what you plant, you you will also reap. Uh, sooner or later, down the road, uh, something will happen, good, good and bad. It is sometimes also a very unexpected, uh, an unexpected uh, thing, as we know, unexpected thing, an unexpected event, an unexpected reaction uh, can can happen and take place, uh, which can, which can not only be negative but can also be very, very positive, and perhaps propel you. Uh, Whatever, physically, financially, uh, into into a completely different level. Verse thirteen: Who is there to harm you? Yeah, who is there? Um, I, I think that's kind of like a statement. Uh, it's probably a statement you could take both ways. Sort of like, who's there to harm you? In other words, either that no one can harm you. Um, it's like like the statement: uh, If God is for you, who can be against you? Uh, it's kind of like, who is there to harm you? I think it's kind of a double, a double-sorted uh, statement. Uh, in one sense, no one, because God is there to help you and protect you. Um, and the worst thing that they can do is destroy your body, but they cannot destroy your soul and spirit. Um, on one sense, who is there to harm you? On the other, on one hand, no one, and on the other hand, uh, almost everyone. Uh, in other words, there, there are definitely plenty of people out there um, who, who want to harm you. They want to harm you on purpose, just because just because they're mean, just because they're mean, mean people, uh, and people who want to harm you because they think they're doing the right thing. They they think they're doing a good thing by harming you, by stopping you, uh, something of that nature. So who is there to harm you if you prove zealous for what is right or what is good? Like that, I think that's interesting. If if you prove zealous. In, in other words, in other words, if you really, I mean, zealous is sort of like a word. I mean, that, that's really you. You have some excitement about something. You have some enthusiasm. You have some drive about it. You're, you're not apathetical. Now, the Bible says here they can't harm you if you if, if you're zealous towards it. Uh, that, that might be like like our crusade march, uh, awareness, uh, prophetic voice uh, concerning Islam. If, if we are if we're apathetical about it. If we're just kind of lackadaisical, if we run and hide, it could be that we're more apt to be harmed uh, than, than if we prove zealous for it and really, really just go for it and just really say, okay, you know, whatever. Uh, here we are. Uh, like, like yesterday, we had announced it, and we were just right there on the street, uh, right on the street in front of the uh, Tampa Bay Times. Um, I don't know how many cars, but lots and lots of cars driving by. Uh, with, with, with our signs, uh, pictures of Muhammad. Uh, of course, at any time, very easily, someone could have just drove by. At one, one time, we, we were at this end, the cops were at this end of the street, and we were way over here at this end of the street. So, so they could have just drove by, shot us, and been gone. And I don't think, I think by the time the cops were aware of it, by the time they got back in their car, unless there was some place that we didn't see, those people would be long gone. They'd be, they'd be long, long down the road. So, so it could be here that your protection is to really not to compromise. Your protection lies in the fact that you are zealous, uh, that you do really, really just go ahead and go for it all the way and say, okay, well, what, well, what happens just simply, sim simply happens. Um, we're, we're not, we're not, we're not going to. Worry about that. Um, verse 14. But even if you should suffer, yeah, this is of course a good verse for anyone, probably for everyone, but, but, but for anyone, I mean, and you do notice that verse uh, 14, or this particular statement, does follow 13, in other words, the being zealous for something, uh, being zealous for, for, for what is good. Uh, it's a very odd thing. 
Uh, you would expect to get persecuted for lies and deceptions. Uh, you would expect to get persecuted for doing something wrong. Uh, but it's very odd, surprising, when you actually get persecuted for doing what's right. I mean, for, for things that are actually right, that you can actually, they're, they're, not, they're, not, now, they're, they're not an opinion of someone. They're actually right. They're, they're proven facts. They're either, let's say, historical facts or something mathematical fact. In other words, it's something, it's something that you can prove, like 2 plus 2 is 4, that that is not an opinion. That is, that is not, well, my opinion is that it's 3. No, that's not an opinion. Uh, there cannot be an opinion. It's a mathematical fact uh, that actually everyone in the world uh, must agree to. And so being persecuted for things that are not opinions but actually facts, um, that, 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 is, that is a state that at times is not easy uh, and, and is very difficult because, because you can say, you can say just right there, said, look, just look, look at, look at the evidence, look, look at what is going on. Uh, but even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. That's why, that's why it's very, very good to um, have at least a little bit of faith. <laughs> you, have to, you have to take, in my opinion, a lot of the Bible by faith. Uh, but even if you should suffer for the sake of right, even, even if you're suffering, you're still blessed. You know, like a contradiction. I mean, how can you, how can you suffer? Because the, the very nature, the very word suffering does not, is not, is not something that, that sounds like a blessing. Uh, it doesn't sound like a good thing. The definition of suffering, even the word itself, or probably because we know what it means, but even the word itself sounds negative. Suffer. Uh, but the Bible says, even if we suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. Okay? Good. So that we have to believe. Uh, we believe it. And we believe also that it will definitely manifest. Because uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the key thing. We're all fine and dandy to believe something, but we also want to, want to see it. I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's good to believe. I mean, if you're hungry, it's good to believe that dinner is coming. But uh, after a while, it's also very good to see that food on the plate. Uh, I mean, it's good to believe. So I believe that it's coming. But when the plate remains empty, then uh, that doesn't help you either. Um, and do not fear that that is a big thing. That is a much, much bigger thing than I ever imagined that it was because fear is a very dominating factor in our world. Uh, we, we run across it in, in, in what we do. We run across it, of course, just all the time in every single form. And it, just, it's, it is actually amazing how much fear dominates, uh, let's say, just in general, dominates our life. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's absolutely, uh, it, I mean, it, 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 it we see it. We see it on a regular basis. It causes people to do things they actually don't believe in. Yeah, they they actually may believe in this, but they will go ahead and do this uh, because of the fear. Because something is behind that fear. There's the fear, and then the, the the definition of the fear or the thing that is behind the fear, which is always loss. Uh, fear is always associated with the loss of something, the loss of a person, relationship, money, a job. Uh, position in the community, uh, it's always associated with some, some type of loss. Um, it says, and do not fear their intimidation, and do not be troubled. I think a, a, a better word would have even been, do not, do not pull back or shrink back, but you also find that in the Bible too, in Hebrews. Um, but it says, do not be intimidated, and that's exactly what happens. We are fearful and intimidated. And intimidated by by that, uh, in, in our case and in our experience, of course, and one of the main intimidators of the whole world is Islam. Uh, that is a totally the way. Okay, sometimes they they do put actual facts into their intimidation, but uh, that's the whole. That they intimidate. They intimidate literally, literally the whole world. Uh, even, even the news news media, even the the, the, the newspapers or, or television or uh, they intimidate business for sure. I mean, they actually they actually intimidate every, everybody. Uh, says, do not be intimidated, or do not fear uh, their intimidation, and do not be troubled. I guess don't worry about it. Uh, try not try not to let it 
I guess a good word would be try not to let it get to you. Uh, because when it gets to you, then the very definition of getting to you means it's got you. Uh, because it's not like it's not that we don't fear. I mean, every, everyone fears. Everyone is, is is troubled about things or situations. Uh, but but we can't. We must do the best we can not to let it get to us. Uh, in other words, once it's got to you, then you're reacting out of that. Uh, you're being you're being controlled out of that. You're making your decisions out of that intimidation and fear. Um, and that's of course what we see people doing all the time. Again, in relationship to to Islam. Verse 15, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. We know how important our heart is. The Bible talks about us protecting our heart because out of it flows the issues of life. It says, but sanctify Christ. In other words, sanctify Christ as Lord in your heart, which I think means probably all of that fear and intimidation, all of those other things that are troubling us and bothering us, which of course they do. Uh, uh, I mean, you, you have all those thoughts. I mean, when you're standing there on the street corner after the after the situation in Paris, after being on the uh, Al Qaeda hit list, and your cars are driving by, you think almost constantly any of these cars could just stick a gun out and shoot you and drive on. I mean, it's probably, it's probably in your mind the whole hour that you're there. Uh, but it says here, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. In other words, make sure that He has that main place in your life, that that He is there. No one else is there, no other event is there, no other fear is there, uh, but, but he is there. Uh, how, however you do that, I guess, ranges uh, uh, from, from person to person. Uh, whether a person just simply says, okay, whatever, I don't have a choice, uh, there, there's nothing that I can do about it, uh, I just have to trust, uh, what happens, happens, uh, we do it. Uh, however each individual handles that, to try to make sure that we sanctify Christ in our hearts as Lord. Um, and the Bible says, always being ready to make a defense to everyone uh, who asks you to give an account for the hope that was with, is within you. In other words, we are to be ready at any time. You hear, here I believe, in that particular, they're probably talking a little bit there about uh, evangelism or the defense of the gospel. Uh, that, that we should be ready at any time, any, any time we are attacked, anyone, any time anyone asks us, maybe any time the door is open, to, to talk about and to give a defense uh, for, for the gospel. And to give an account, it says, for the hope that is in us. Another, of course, another very powerful force is hope. Um, we have to somehow, we have to somehow hold on to, that can of course be difficult also at times, uh, we have to hold on to the hope, the hope that whatever <laughs> it's going to be okay. Uh, God, God is going to do it. Uh, he's going to show up uh, sooner or later. He's not going to let us drown. He's not going to let 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 evil overtake us. Uh, he's not going to let us overtake us. Uh, uh, our own whatever uh, people call it demons that everyone or or things that people fight within their own within their own mind and heart. Uh, that somehow, somehow God, that somehow that, that hope, that hope is still there. Uh, to give an account for the hope that is in you. Yet with gentleness and reverence. So uh, gentleness and reverence, definitely we are not that about Islam. Uh, we, we give the, I guess they give the account uh, for the hope that is in them too, uh, but not with gentleness and reverence. Uh, so, so we are to share the gospel in a good, I guess good, respectable, uh, but, but, but of course always straightforward, truthful, truthful manner. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 16. And keep a good conscience. Uh, that that's, that's an important thing. Uh, not, not, that, not that anyone is perfect. Um, everyone, I guess, has things that they can repent of uh, every day. I think keeping a good conscience is, is probably also, again, trusting God, trusting in God's grace and faith, and just doing, yeah, not... not what do they say? Uh, being true to yourself or not betraying yourself. I think that the world uses those kind of terms. I think what it means for us as Christians is, is, is just try, trying to do what we know God has called us to do. To just try, trying to do that. Uh, and no matter what. If it's, if it's Islam, if it's, if it's making that awareness, uh, if it's doing that, then we just do it. 
And what happens if people are mad at us, if the mall's mad at us, if the mall manager's mad at us, if this person over here thinks we're the hero and this person over here thinks we're the devil, uh, it doesn't make any difference. We at night, we at night have at least the clear conscience of knowing we tried. <laughs> you know, we did, okay, we may have failed, we may have done this, we may have failed, we may have won, uh, we may have lost this battle and won that battle, uh, but, but, but we tried. I think that's the saddest thing about about people uh, when they do waste their life, uh, when they just they just settle in uh, for the norm, and after a while time goes very fast. Uh, you know, after a while it, go, it go, goes very fast, uh, and I think having a good conscience is that we did we, we tried to do it. Uh, it's important, of course, to succeed and win. I think it's less important to succeed and win than it is to try, than it is to that it is to just go ahead. And, and try to do it um, and keep a good conscience so that in the thing in which you are slandered um, yeah I mean if, if you're doing good if you're trying to follow God if you're standing up for what is right and righteousness if you're not caving into the society running with the society doing and believing what they believe uh, standing up then you're going to be slandered yeah. uh, people are going to talk talk bad about you um, um, well, what did what did they say? Uh, what was it, Paul? Who said something about the, the 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 animal or this animal has has their has their has their hole and their place where they could go and hide? But I have no place. Or the, or the apostle has no place. And that's sort of how you feel after a while. You're really you're really just not you're not, you're not welcomed anywhere. Uh, and that's just maybe a very mild exaggeration because uh, uh, you you are, you are going to be slandered. Uh, and that's that's just really, yeah. But that's just really the way it is. Those who revile you for your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. In other words, they revile you, they reject you, they don't want you. Uh, don't come here, don't be here, don't associate here uh, for your good behavior. In other words, for being right uh, in, in 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 Jesus. Um, don't 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 revile you for your good behavior says they will be put to shame. Mm -hmm. In order that their deeds will sooner or later be revealed. Uh, so sooner or later, sooner or later, you know, the ball pops to the top from the pool. You can only hold it down so long. It says sooner or later, sooner, sooner or later it comes out. Sooner or later a lie is a lie. Okay. Maybe everybody's told a lie or a white lie at one time. Okay, there are things that, are, that you probably got away with, but at the same time, so sooner or later, so sooner or later, it, it comes back. And sooner or later, we see too through the years, all of the people that, that do things or lie about us or do this or that, it, do, it does come usually back in some form uh, to bite them. Uh, good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. Verse 17, for it is better if God should will it so I mean, why would God will it so? But the Bible does say that God, I mean, I would interpret it this as uh, not even an if. I would determine it that God does will it or does allow it. Uh, yeah, and when it's happening to you, it doesn't really matter much whether or not God did it or allowed it. It's happening to you. It's just like when people talk about God, they say, well, God sends no one to hell. Your sin sends you to hell. Okay, it's theologically true. Uh, but uh, when you're in hell, I mean, this doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. Right. If God sent you there, or your sin sent you there, you are still there. Mm -hmm. I mean, God still allowed it. Uh, the system allowed it. Mm -hmm. I mean, so something allowed it. I mean, you you are there. Uh, so it says here, for it is better if God should will it so that you suffer for doing what is right rather than for doing what is wrong. Now that sounds pretty unfair to me, <laughs> you know. You know, I mean, I think if you treated your children that way, you probably would lose them, and probably would come to the United States government would probably come and take them away from you. Uh, it says here, if God would will it so, if He would allow it, cause it to be that you suffer for doing what is right, rather than for doing what is wrong. Yeah, yeah. There you have to really. I don't know what that does for you, but uh, I guess. I guess, I guess, uh, 
if you react properly, maybe it draws you closer to God. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe it causes you just to trust or, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, if you wanted to dwell on that statement for a long time and then really look at it, uh, it's a pretty, pretty hard statement mm -hmm. uh, that, that God would allow that or even will it so. Uh, verse 18, for Christ also died, okay, he also uh, did suffer the same thing. I mean, he of course did die uh, let's say unjustly in, in that sense that he fought, in other words in the sense that he was not guilty uh, he died of course on purpose and gave his life for us so that we know that he didn't die because he was wrong so he, in that sense he died and was punished and beaten unjustly uh, so but that there was also a purpose in that for him so I guess we could take that for verse 17 for us and say okay being persecuted unjustly suffering unjustly uh, has its purpose, has some kind, some some kind of a purpose there, um, yeah. And, and it's also possibly just a condition of our world and the spiritual atmosphere that, that of course, we live in. Uh, when we attack certain things of the world, certain certain strongholds, and the word stronghold is something that people really really hold very very highly. When when you attack that. Uh, for, for example, Islam, I mean, I guess there's 1.8 or so billion people who hold it very highly. So when you attack that, uh, then of course you're going to suffer for that. Uh, for Christ also died for sins once for all. The just for the unjust. So that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. So, so I guess if we wanted to take that also for us, I guess, I guess our suffering, uh, our suffering makes us, or can make us, more alive, um, I don't know, maybe tougher, maybe maybe build our faith. You know, there's the old saying that, uh, I don't know who made it up, but I don't find it that good, but I guess it's true. Uh, what doesn't kill you uh, makes you tough or whatever. Uh, I, guess, I guess to a certain degree it's true, as long as, of course, you handle it in a proper way. If you handle it with the wrong attitude and with anger and bitterness and unforgiveness, then of course that, that event will not make you stronger. Uh, that event will, of course, then destroy you. Uh, or actually that event does not destroy, destroy you, but that attitude uh, destroys you. Um, which, of course, you know, then again, of course, at times it's also not easy. Uh, to bring us, he died for our sins, uh, to bring us to God. Uh, having uh, put to death in the flesh, Having been put to death in the flesh, he died in the flesh, so I guess to a certain extent our flesh uh, uh, dies too. I mean, I guess when we go through hard times, I guess it is basically our flesh uh, that is, is suffering uh, to a degree. I guess it's our feelings, our emotions, uh, you know, the, the, that, that, that type of flesh that is suffering. Um, so he died in the flesh, uh, but made alive in the spirit. Yeah, so in other words, the cross, the cross was not able to kill him. Uh, and what we are going through in the right way is not able to kill us. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not that big. Uh, no, matter, no matter how terrible it might be, it's probably not, not that big. Uh, so, uh, so, verse 19, in which also he made, he went and made proclamation to the spirits now, now in prison. Uh, verse 20, last verse. Who once, who once were disobedient. Those, those spirits in prison, those people being held there, uh, in, in, that, in that, people call that that place there, uh, that where they were held before Jesus uh, died and, and, and rose from the dead. Who once were disobedient. That is, of course, always the key word. Uh, being obedient, uh, you know, we, we see, we see. Of course, obedience is 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 the foundation. I guess the foundation to a certain extent, or a foundation stone of everything. Obedience. I mean, without obedience, uh, you will not keep a job. Uh, you will not have any money. Uh, you'll land in jail. I mean, everything in our society, to a certain extent, go, goes to obedience. I mean, as soon as we walk out of the door, I mean. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, even when we walk out of the door, we have to be properly closed or we'll be in, 
disobedience and be thrown in jail, or we have to stop at the stoplights so we can't speed, or, or I mean, uh, there's all kinds of things that our life is governed, governed by where we are demanded to be obedient. Uh, most of the things that we do are probably we are done automatic. We do automatically, but they're still acts of, of, of obedience, is what they are. Uh, who once were disobedient, and that's why it's so important for us, uh, because there's a high price for disobedience. Uh, that's why it's important for us to be obedient to God, for us to for us to know what we're doing, where we're going, uh, and that we partly know just simply by the Bible. Uh, we partly know what we should what we should say, preach. Uh, teach, believe, and pass on. Uh, who once were disobedient, when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah. Okay, I believe probably that means there that God was patiently waiting for for the world to repent, uh, for them to because they were doing the world at that time was so bad. I guess I guess much worse than today. Uh, today's society is pretty bad, uh, but I guess I guess then it was even worse. Uh, that God was waiting for them to turn from their wicked ways. Uh, God was waiting for them, them to repent. Um, but because, yeah, because sooner or later, like the Bible says, do not be deceived or do not be a fool. Uh, what you have sown, that you should also reap. And, and, and God was waiting patiently in the days of Noah, I believe, for them to do something. Uh, but, but even God, just like, just like people, some people are more patient than others, but, but just like, but, but God, yeah, you know, God is also sooner or later, God's patience, God's turning of his head, God's closing of his eyes, sooner or later has an end. Uh, so sooner or later, God is called upon uh, to, to do something. Uh, so he was waiting. During the construction of the ark, he waited that whole time. And people say it took to build the ark. I've heard somewhere between 100 and 120 years. That's a long time. That's a long time to wait. A lot of people lived and died in 120 years. A lot of few, few generations, few, few generations passed on. They saw Noah build the ark. They, they saw the signs. They, they saw what was going on. They, they knew. They knew that Noah was a righteous man. They knew he was not. He was not crazy. He was not an idiot. That uh, they could see he was evidently. A very, very hard worker and a very skilled person to, to build a boat back then without the electric saw and, and electric hammer and, and, and huge machinery and, and cranes. Uh, he, he built he built something that was huge. I don't know how like the like the length of a football field. Uh, huge, huge thing. Uh, so 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 evidently he must have had at that level a very good reputation. They may not have liked him because of his righteous stand, uh, but he must have had a good reputation uh, in, in, in those other areas. So they had plenty of time to see what was going on. Like today, like today, we've had 1,400 years of Islamic terrorism in history uh, to see what is going on. Or well, if we bring it to our level here in the States, uh, we see uh, we've had plenty of time since, uh, since Wade, uh, but we have plenty of time to repent of abortion. We have plenty of time uh, to do that. Um, but, but we see our society gets less and less moral. Uh, our society gets more and more corrupt and more and more and more and more things glorify corruption uh, such as being whatever, a gangster or a drug dealer or, or some other kind of a person. Uh, so it says here that, that God waited in which a few this is of course very depressing <laughs> I mean, this, it's like really depressing. I mean, you have, you have here the whole world. Uh, and, and in all of those evil people, there's probably a whole lot of really popular people like today. Today there's all kinds of evil people and a lot, a lot of evil people are very popular, very rich, uh, very, very well liked, very recognizable on the street, uh, very, very sought after. Uh, you know, the, 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 whole, the whole list of whatever is a People magazine comes out with every year. Uh, the most handsome person in the world or whatever. I mean, you know, just, uh, just uh, you know, people who are people who are just sought after. There must have been those kind of people there. Even though at that time, I guess they didn't play baseball or football or golf or, or, or have movies. But you've always had popular people. You've always had rich people. You've always had people who were, who were, who were looked up to for, 
for, let's say, the wrong reasons. Um, but it says here, in which a few, this is the whole world, this is how corrupt it was. I think we're not quite that corrupt, but we're corrupt. Uh, in which a few, that is eight persons. I mean, I mean, in, uh, God, God, God saved more animals than he did people. God saved, I guess, hundreds of animals, or maybe, I don't know, thousands of animals. Uh, that is, as few as eight people were brought safely through the water. I mean, you can't say, God's not willing to kill people. Yeah, but God's not willing, God's not willing to someday just have enough and say, okay, that's it, man. That's it. It's just, he killed them all. He killed every single one of them. Drowned them. They, that's how that they died, by drowning. He could have just somehow gave them all a quick heart attack or something. That's like about probably the easiest way to go. Uh, it's over in a few seconds. Uh, but God let them drown. Uh, let them experience that, that fear, that drowning, that choking. Uh, let er every single person on earth save only eight people. So, so, so God, in one sense, is as it says here, he had great patience. On the other end, when it's over, it's over. Yeah, yeah when, 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 God, when God turns out the light, then that's pretty much it. Saved eight people. I mean, that should be, it should be somewhat of a motivating factor uh, to be righteous and, and do what God has called us to do and do what we're supposed to do. Um, because because there, is, there, there is a time when, when, it's, when it's just simply, it's simply too late for, let's say, a society. It's too, too late, too late for them. They have become too corrupt. They have become too sinful. Or maybe even, maybe not even too sinful and corrupt, uh, but but it become what comes with being overly sinful and corrupt, a hard heart. They have become very hard-hearted and are not willing to repent. Uh, do not want to repent. Do not see a necessity to repent. And when that happens, then of course it's too late. It's not it's not the amount of sin that you have done or the wrong that you have done. We definitely definitely should not do that either. But it's once they've reached that hard-hearted state. Uh, then it's over. And that's where I guess it was at. I guess God waited as long as he could. They were hard-hearted. They were not willing to repent. They had, they had the example right in front of them day and night for a hundred years and it did absolutely no good. Um, so for us that should be somewhat shocking, motivating for us to, to do what God has called us to do, pray for America, uh, continue to do it, continue to stand up because I, I believe, uh, I believe we will be we can be we can be one of those eight, but we can we can definitely we can because God definitely does want to save all He can, and just at that time that's all He could. Uh, it's not that it was limited, uh, so so we can definitely be uh, one of those eight. Let's pray. Father, God, we thank you for today. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you by the grace of God, Father God, that we can be one of those eight uh, that we can handle somehow by God's grace. Uh, our, our suffering that we either brought upon ourselves, or, or uh, God allowed it or it came or it's a result of what we are doing uh, whatever reason it is we ask you Father God we thank you for your grace there we thank you for keeping us on on the uh, straight and narrow uh, doing what you have called us to do and Father God by the grace of God we do make indeed that pledge and proclamation uh, that, that we will not we will not back down. We will not run away. We shall continue to stand and speak the truth in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.